Welcome to Chautauqua People. My guest is Lois Dubeck. She currently serves as Managing Director of VACHI, Visual Arts at Chautauqua Institution. She oversees nine programs in the Chautauqua, in the Chautauqua uh, uh, School of Art and ten exhibitions annually in the art centers. Lois is a native of Western Pennsylvania, did her undergraduate work at the University of Pittsburgh, holds an MBA from Fordham, and did additional graduate work in the American University in Washington, D.C. She worked for many years as a project manager, product manager, at Citibank headquarters in New York City before joining the art community at Chautauqua. She currently lives in Rockville, Maryland, when not at Chautauqua. Vachi has 38 full-time students and will serve over 500 students in special studies classes this summer. Lois, how did you make your way to Chautauqua? How did I first come here? Right. Um, I first came to Chautauqua 33 years ago. I had a baby. I was working in New York City. And my husband, Don Kimes, was given the job of artistic director. And we made our way all the way across the state of New York. And it was my first introduction to Chautauqua. And the baby was how old? Ten days old. Ten days. Wow. OK. And how was that first summer? Well, the first summer for me was rough because um, I was sick most of the summer, unfortunately, and the baby had colic. And um, we lived in a little apartment, um, a little building that had two apartments. One side was Jean-Pierre, the head of dance, and the other side was us. And um, it, it was uh, quite a, a rainy summer and a noisy summer, and um, I didn't get to see a whole lot of Chautauqua that year. But fortunately, I came back. <laughs> <laughs> things got better. Yes, much, things yeah. got much better. <laughs> right. Now, what's the nature of your work as managing director? Um, I oversee a lot of the programs, the art programs. Uh, we, as you said, we have 38 students who come to us um, from all over the United States and abroad. And they are with us for seven weeks. Um, I also oversee the faculty. Um, normally, in, an, in a normal year, we have like 25 to 30 faculty, but this year, since it's the last year, we have, I think, 41. Wow. So we have a lot of turnover. Um, there's staff. There's also the special studies program that the visual arts brings to Chautauquans. And we have um, programs in ceramics, printmaking, um, ceramics, digital media, um, young artists drawing and some mosaics at the end in week eight. Right. So we run about 500 Chautauquans from children to adults, from six years old to as old as you want through those programs. Right. Now, with this many faculty, how are the faculty selected? Um, they are selected um, primarily by reputation, um, both as artists and teachers. Um, Don Kime selects uh, them through different ways every summer. Um, we also go to the College Art Association, which is the national organization for college teachers and art historians and, and uh, people in the visual arts. And we have um, gotten a lot of people out of there over the years as well. Okay. And um, do you have them submit a portfolio or, or teaching credentials or what? Um, everything is pretty much online now, so right. you look at people's websites and you, it's very easy to find out you know, how they're doing because one of the things that we do is an evaluation at the end of the summer for our students and we ask them how they heard about Chautauqua and if they have a professor or someone that they think would be great teaching in our program, they give us that person's name and contact number. And so, so, and so that's another way that we can recruit someone. So you have, you have good, good items. Now, um, can you tell me about some new disciplines that have been taught here at Vachy? Um, well, the most recent thing that we have is a new digital media studio. So we didn't have this before because it was a very expensive thing to bring up because you need computers. Right. So we received a very generous grant from Chip and Gail Gamble, and we were able to buy 10 iMacs, drawing pads, um, printers, a screen monitor, and um, incorporate this into our program. And we not only serve the students who are with us for seven weeks, but we also are now serving the community. So if you want to learn um, Adobe Photoshop, for example, we have a class uh, for four weeks this summer that we, can, we open to Chautauquans. And that's really nifty because uh, it's new material, state-of-the-art equipment, and often these computer classes don't 
get the latest the latest of equipment. Right, right. Now, um, I understand then that, that you have um, also done a program in um, silkscreen. Could you tell me about that? Um, the silkscreen program is new. Um, we, we brought it up last year. Um, Don Kimes received a donation from um, a studio that was getting rid of their silkscreen equipment and it was perfectly good. So uh, we rented a truck and went down and picked it up ourselves, brought it to Chautauqua. Um, the first year we just had it in storage and now that we have the digital media, it works in tandem with um, what we're doing in the digital media studio. So you can do um, a drawing or a photograph or a digital image and then we can transform it to go into the silk screen process, and then you get these images that are these pictures that I, that I brought to show today. Great. Can we take a look at these and maybe tell sure. us? Let me hold them up, and and well, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, that first one is called Amaryllis, and it's by New York City artist Steffi Franks, and it's just a beautiful, simple drawing of uh, two flowers. And we're going to auction these off at the uh, Bocce Partners Stroll Through the Arts Gala on Saturday, July 28th. Um, and all the money that's raised in the gala goes to art student scholarships. That's wonderful. And, um, you know, it's a really fun evening. We have dinner and drinks and music and a great auction. And the Chautauquans have really been great in supporting us and uh, buying these different art um, Every year we try to do a different project so that we bring Chautauquan something new. And we've never done silkscreen before, so that's why we're doing this. I can vouch it's a fun evening. It was there when we've been there the last two years. Yeah. So let's take a look at this is a challenge for Devin. To bring and that, that one is um, by Lee Tribe. He's a New York City sculptor. And he does really nice drawings. And he did this beautiful drawing, and then it was transferred on to the silkscreen and then printed. Okay, so that's, that's magnificent. And here we have a Western Pennsylvania. Yes, this one um, is, is near and dear to me, the Heinz plant where, um, you know, ketchup is produced. Um, this is by artist, he's a ceramic artist, Kyle Hauser, and he puts these um, Heinz plant pictures and some other Pittsburgh um, landmarks on his ceramics. And we have some of those to, uh, on sale in the gallery, actually, this summer. And um, Heinz t and um, Kyle took his Heinz um, picture, and we ran it through the silkscreen process. And it's just a beautiful picture of plant, of the plant with the big 57 on it. Magnificent on the smokestack. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll come back. We'll get the back side of that one. We do got the back. Okay. And this is a picture by um, an artist. Chris Semmerjeff, and he did a very small um, ink and paper drawing standing in the quad just last week in the art quad, and that is one end of the art school facility, and that happens to be the top is the printmaking studio, and the bottom is called the grotto where we have um, art student studios, and it's just a beautiful little drawing that was transferred onto the silk screen. It was a much smaller drawing, and as you can see, this is a very large um, print of it. But mm -hmm. it's, it's just very beautiful, and it just captures the art school at a certain time of day. And it's, it's, it's called TR's House, um, and that stands for Tom Ranesis, our master printer, because that's where he spends a lot of time. <laughs> that's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. And so these will be on sale? Yes, they will be on auction. On auction. Okay. I know I found that to be lots of fun to go to that uh, event over the years. Now, um, so this is, this is new to the art school this year. Right. And, and when somebody would apply for a summer program, do they specify a field you want to work in? They do. They do. They say whether they're a painter or a sculptor, printmaker, drawer, or ceramicist. Mm -hmm. And what, what generally do you urge the students to do? Try something new or, or bear down in their field? I'm just, cu just curious. Well, you know, we give them the option. I mean, if you come here as a painter and you just want to paint, you can do that. But if you want to do something that maybe you didn't get a chance to do when you were an undergraduate, um, we encourage you to try. I mean, we have a class going on through um, one of our TAs, Hannah Shelb, 
where she's going to teach some painters who have never done ceramics how to throw on the wheel. So that's a side thing that they can learn that they might have some fun with this summer and you know maybe they'll find something they like to do with, with uh, ceramics that they never thought of before. I would love to be a fly on the wall, particularly when it comes to seeing if I paint the outside of the ceramic and, and, and whatever. Now let's ask a question for you, a tough one. You came to the art community here as an MBA with experience doing corporate work in the bank, and yet you've acquired all sorts of skills in art. I, I, I'm sort of astounded. What can you do? I mean, if you told me you've done um, shows and the like, Right. I mean, I've, I've hung many, many exhibitions over the past 30-some years. Um, our first gallery was um, where the Chautauquan Daily is right now. Right. It's Logan on Bester Plaza. We called it Logan Galleries on Bester Plaza. Mm -hmm. And um, it was essentially half of the bottom floor. Um, and we put uh, artwork in there. We had never had a gallery here that was owned by the institution. We always had the big gallery that was called the Chautauqua Center for the Visual Arts, but that was, the building was owned by Chautauqua, but um, it was rented to uh, an independent art group, and they would put shows in that every summer. And the building was getting very old, and the art group, it was, became harder and harder for them to make ends meet. So at one point, um, they had a lot of discussion with Don, and they decided to turn over everything um, to the institution, and we agreed to run the gallery. And one of the things that we took over was the Chautauqua Annual Exhibition of Contemporary Art. And that is, this year was the 61st Chautauqua Annual. So this started back in the 50s, and um, we have kept it going as our promise to the, the people who, you know, had their trust in us to let us run um, the gallery from that point forward. And they, they became a Friends of the Arts group after that. And our present group, which is the Friends of the Arts group, the Vachi Partners, um, sprung out of that original group of artists who, you know, very much um, were hands-on in their own gallery. Mm -hmm. That's a, a wonderful story. Thank you. You just passed it down and, and the new team just kept it going and did bigger and better things. Right, right. And we were in the IDEA campaign all those years ago, and that made us able to raise a lot of money to actually um, refurbish that gallery. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to mention was that on the second floor of the Stroll Arts Center is um, a space called the Gallo Family Gallery. And that particular space was made for museum quality exhibitions. So there is humidity control, light control, temperature control. And so we are able to borrow from museums and put pieces there. And one of the things we did when we brought the gallery up was borrow, we had a three year grant um, to borrow works from the Albright Knox. And so that was great. You know, right. it was a great way to kick off that, that whole building. That's wonderful. Now, can you go a little further and tell us about the renovations? and improvements that went on in the, the institution's art facilities, particularly the school there. Yeah, the school, um, is, it was built, the first wing of the school, it's in uh, the shape of a U. And so the first wing was a, the bottom of the U. And that was, I think, constructed in 1909. So what Chautauqua did was each year in the off season, they renovated a wing and um, one of the things that we said was there was no change that we really wanted to make we just didn't want the buildings to fall down right. because the buildings um, were not safe uh, the um, the beams that are supposed to come and hit a roof like that um, were pretty far away so with the snow in this part of the country I never knew whether the building would be standing from one year to the next so they lifted up each section of the building. They went underneath with little bulldozers. They put I-beams up, and the buildings just popped right back into shape. So it was amazing. I, I mean, um, every section of the art school went back into shape with that kind of um, care and, and uh, you know, to the, to the architect's credit, you know, taking off all those layers of different roofing, you know, to see how everything would work. When I was a young person here, our standing joke was a mark of authenticity of a genuine Chautauqua building. It's the speed with which a marble makes its way to the exterior wall when dropped in the center of a floor. 
It sounds like those were very authentic yes. buildings beforehand. They were. They and now, were. now they're plumb and level. They are. And the they walls are. are square. Yes. Sounds like you're taking all the fun away from Well, <laughs> <laughs> they're also safe. I mean, we also had kilns inside those old buildings. And uh, with the renovation, we were able to build a kiln shed outside the building. And um, that made it a lot safer. There were times when I was called because the roof was on fire. So, I mean, we wow. had to get the fire department. It was scary because, I mean, we have gas and electric kilns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was bad. And I, I think one of the other things that I've noticed in, you know, since I've been doing this job is when I would open the buildings um, after a long winter is um, there was a lot of guano from the bats. And as you know, white nose syndrome is killing the little brown bats, and there's hardly anything now. And that's sad, because it used to be really neat to sit around 8.30 at night and watch them swoop out of the buildings. Mm -hmm. And we would always tell the students, those are bats, those aren't birds. Yeah. And um, I've noticed an increase in insects around. Yes. Night, yes, everyone that. has. And also, the spider population has increased. Right, right. Now, um, I've always liked that courtyard, that U-shaped courtyard. I'm injecting myself in here, but I think there was a, a phrase from an architectural historian. Thomas Jefferson coined as speaking of academical uh, quadrangles, right. which were three-sided. And, and so that's now over a century old. And what insight the people had to focus then on the lake. Right, right. And, and you know, faculty and students still come into the middle of the courtyard and they talk and, and all kinds of different things happen when they're able to share what they're doing and bring people into their studios and, and meet. You know, the, the 38 students and faculty become very close by the end of the, the seven weeks. There's, there's a lot that goes on, a lot of collaboration, mm -hmm. um, a lot of interest with, with each other's work, which is still great. Now, what do you hear from the students after graduation? Um, we hear from them um, all the time. I mean, now with social media, we have um, a Chautauqua Facebook page. So everybody, you know, can become a friend of that and they can see what um, people are posting, you know, um, the people who have moved on and even the faculty. I mean, they will bring things that, you know, I'm having a show here or there and so that if a Chautauqua um, graduate of the school or faculty is in that town, they can go and and support that that person in their show. So that's been really great. Mm. Do many of the students return? Uh, a lot do. A lot do. We we have um, I think four that have come back this summer, knowing it was the final summer. But wow. yes, they do. We we try to limit it for how many times you can come back. But um, you know, it's it's a nice testament that they really like the program. And actually, today after we had talked earlier, um, a student walked in who hadn't been here for 10 years, and he, um, he knew that we were leaving, so he stopped by to say goodbye, and he told me Chautauqua, this program changed my life. And wow. he's on his way to a master printmaking program in um, the Southwest. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. And so that just punctuates the nature of the, uh, of the work that's done. Yeah. Now, um, is it selective to get into the program? Yes, yes. Um, the, what, what happens is people know about the program and we're old enough now that people who have been through the program are professors and so they send their, their, stu their best students. Um, they contact us and they say, I have someone who you know, would be really great in the program. Mm -hmm. So they don't send 10 people and see who will be picked for the program. They send their very best. So we may not get a ton of applications, but we know that the, the people that we do see they're the best of the best. And they've been vetted. They've been vetted already. Very smartly. Yes. Very smartly. Okay, so the, the program seems to be doing well. The numbers are up. But I understand this is your final season. Yes. And dance. Yes. And you've been in this, your job for how long? This is my 30th summer. 30th summer. Right. And as managing director then, you are the problem solver. Right. <laughs> so, when, so when the roof is on fire, they don't call the art folks, they call, they call the MBA and say, now what can we do to get this taken care of? Right. And right. you have to bring in the contractors and, and, and make the tough decisions as to what we're going to do for facilities and money and the like. Okay. Now, what are your plans with this being your final summer here at Chautauqua? Back up. Your final summer in this position. Because right. you better be coming back. <laughs> well, our immediate plans 
uh, are to start um, a residency program in Italy. Mm -hmm. So we are going to go to um, Umbria, Italy. The town is called Corciano. It's a small hill town. It's thousands of years old. The Etruscans were there. Um, it is about eight kilometers from Perugia. Uh, we're right in the middle of the country. We have a friend who has a large villa and a country house and we are going to open it to artists and writers and you come and stay with us for three weeks. You do your own discipline and we will do things that make you feel very welcome and to give you an understanding of art in Italy. So maybe we'll go to Assisi and we'll look at the frescoes we'll, or we'll go to um, an olive factory and we will have an olive oil tasting. So it's, it's kind of like it'll enhance your experience and make you know that you're in Italy and we're doing something really special. Right. How long has this been in the making? Uh, less than a year. <laughs> right, right. You know, we, we really thought that um, this is kind of the time, I mean, things kind of came together where we thought, you know, this is the right time. Mm -hmm. And I know shared with me a couple of years ago, he goes to, has been to Italy in the summers. Right. So this is, this is not some accidental sort of thing that it's presumably is well thought out. Yes. And you have, you have the contacts and, and good things to do with it. Yes. Um, that's great. What else do we need to talk about? Gosh, um, people should keep looking at art. <laughs> people it. should try to learn about art. Um, not only look, but learn about it. What is the process? What is the artist who's made it? Um, what is their background? Why do they make this kind of art? What do they like about it? I mean, there's so much that you can learn about art that, um, especially contemporary art. I mean, I know everybody studies the masters, but at the same time, there are so many good people making great pieces now, and we need to pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. if, if a young person came to you and said, you were trained in business administration, you have worked with the big boys in the banks, but I would too would like to end up in art administration. Can you lay out a, a path for me and give me some recommendations. Well, now, when I started this, there were no arts administration programs. There are tons of them now. Really? Um, so you can actually go and study this mm -hmm. and, and become an art administrator, and it trains you to do what I'm doing, um, whether it's in um, a visual arts area or a music area or dance or theater. Mm -hmm. So there, there is actually an academic path to follow for this. Any recommendations like American University? Or? American University does have a program, <laughs> <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that would take care of it. Yeah. What else we need to talk about? Gosh, um, I'm looking forward to a great summer. Great. Um, we've got a fabulous faculty, and I really am um, going to have a great time saying goodbye to everybody and thanking them for coming out one last time. Um, it's bittersweet, you know. Um, I'm sure I'll miss Chautauqua, but at the same time, um, I'm looking forward to sitting in a piazza with a glass of wine or some cappuccino. And having a new experience. Yeah. That's yeah. been great. That's been great. And this has been fun. So I hope you will come back and um, come back to Chautauqua this summer or two and come back to Chautauqua people. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you so for having much. me. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Well.